Okay. And start. All right, Larry. Okay. Good evening. Um, welcome to the um, Board of Elections um, uh, meeting, which is I'm calling to order at 531. Can we um, please have a roll call? Is Charlie on? Hello? Um, Charlie is What's, there. Can he hear, not hear me? His, his name is there, but his screen is black. I see his face on my screen, but it's I not know. moving. Oh, he just got, he must be having connectivity problems. Okay, He's the vice so, secretary. Com, um, Commissioner King, can you? Yes. Take over the secretary. Okay. Duty, Commissioner, Commissioner Harris. Present. Commissioner Ward. Present. Commissioner King, present. Oh, he's Commissioner back. Mark Ward is present. I'm having computer issues, sorry. Okay. No problem. Thank you and welcome. Um, I would like to welcome everybody who has joined in um, on Zoom to the meeting this evening and um, would like to take a moment and just explain a little bit about the process that we are involved in in terms of as reprecincting um, re and where we are at this particular moment. Um, so every 10 years after um, the federal census is completed, new ward and precinct boundary lines are drawn to reflect um, changes in the city population and to anticipate the needs of the city election system for the next decade. So that's 10 years. Voting precincts established by a um, city or town must meet certain criteria, follow certain requirements. Okay. One, each new precinct must be comprised of compact and contiguous territory without protruding fingers or long tails to the extent possible. Two, precincts must be bound by the center line of streets or other well-defined boundaries, such as streams or other bodies of waters railroad tracks, power lines, or other clearly visible geographic figures. Three, no precinct may contain more than 4,000 residents. Five, every precinct population must be within 5% of the average precinct population for that ward or town. It must be within 5%. That's pretty important. Ward Prop 6, ward populations must be within 5% of the average ward population for the city as well. Seven, redrawn ward and precinct boundaries must not, in the um, dilution of minority groups members vote, must not result in the dilution of minority groups members votes. Okay. Hopefully that will add to the process and the discussion that is about to take place regarding reprecincting. With that being said, um, move that we will open public comment. Do you wanna um, let people know if, in case they haven't been to our meetings before that they should raise their hand in Zoom? Yes. In order to speak, and then we, yes. then you will call on people. And right, I will um, call on people as I see hands go up. You have to press the button and raise your hand in Zoom. Also, just to be clear, this meeting is being recorded, which all election meetings are recorded for future purposes, viewing future viewing purposes. Okay, so. Um, I see three participant raised hands at this point, four. And I will just go down the line and call them in order as they um, 
go up in 10 days. The first person I will call on will be Miss Elaine DeRosa. Make sure you unmute yourself, please. And stay muted when you're not talking to limit the noise factors. Thank you. Okay, um, my name is Elaine DeRosa. I live at Four Pleasant Place in Cambridge. I'm testifying to request that the Election Commission reconsider its redistricting of Ward 2-1. The geographic spread of Ward 2-1 represents the largest geographic spread of any other city ward districts. This configuration connects a residential community with the MIT student campus. The configuration of this district would make the establishment of a ward committee extremely difficult given the geographic distance and the limited common focus of the students and the established residents, thus limiting the participation and voice of these residents in electoral decisions. This redistricting also isolates the residents of Washington Elms, Newtown Court from the rest of their neighborhood, further creating political isolation. At a time when the nation is fighting against voter suppression, I urge the Cambridge Election Commission to change this decision in order to promote more diverse electoral participation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next person will be Councillor E. Denise Simmons. Good evening <clears throat> to the chair and the members of the election commission. I want to thank you for having this hearing this evening and for allowing the members of the community to share their thoughts about the proposed redistricting. Tonight I speak as an elected official and as a concerned member of my community and as a resident of Ward 2, Precinct 1. And I want to focus my remarks specifically on the redistricting of Ward 2. Under the new proposal, it appears that Washington Elms and perhaps Newtown Court would be consolidated with a large swath of MIT. And with all due respect to MIT and the students, I know they're extraordinarily proactive. Uh, I do have concerns that these two housing developers will now have less influence and less of a voice in the conversations that shape our community. Out of the wards we create spring the ward committee committees and those committees have a diverse and and, and healthy interchange. They foster greater civic engagement. It means more people are committed to being involved in critical civic discussions. It means more people urge, or people are urged to make their voices heard at polls. And well, may you may not often think about it this way, but the ward committees are constantly operating in the backgrounds, trying to stoke the fires of civic engagement among our residents. With this new version of Ward 2, my great concern that is in effect Washington Elms and Newtown Court, which are composed largely of people of color and moderate and low income residents will become less affluent members of the community that you will have disenfranchised them. Now, while it's true that everyone in the newly defined Ward 2 will still be able to vote and participate in civic life, loss of having the CHA tenants, the tenants that uh, may be living in buildings that have been organized by low and moderate, uh, low and moderate housing developers or HRI, just to start, there's so many different um, organizations that have built housing in, in 2-1, finally known as the port. Uh, I think that What's going to happen is that this disenfranchisement, as I see it, will have a ripple, a ripple impact. I do worry that it's going to make it easier for folks at a subconscious level, I'm going to say, to dismiss any concerns by that new Ward 2. They'll say, oh, it's just that it, that's MIT's ward. That's a student's ward. And overlook the, overlook the people that have lived there for such a long time time and have a real stake in the outcome of what happens in their city. I feel that they, this, this new war tool in large part, particularly the long time residents will get written off. Secretary of State Galvin office warns us of this idea of minority vote dilution. 
concern around packing, which his office defines as concentrating a high proportion of minority group members in one or a few districts so that their votes cannot elect as many minority group representatives as other wards will be able to elect individuals. So I have concerns that this newly configured ward may lead us down that road. It's much harder to write off the concerns of any one neighborhood ward or precinct when it contains a more diverse socioeconomic mix of people. Currently, Washington Elms and Newtown Court are mixed, are mixed in with the larger, more diverse coalitions of residents, which strengthens its influence and its level of engagement. I urge us to think very carefully because we want we before we take actions that could lead us to the unintended consequence of lessening the influence and engagement of some of our less affluent residents. I often say we all want to do the right thing, but we also need to be cautious that to do the right thing, we end up doing it the wrong way. So I respectfully ask that we reconsider this proposed new boundaries of Ward 2 in favor of something that will ensure Washington Elms, Newtown Court, and other parts of this neighborhood, me included, uh, are not isolated and cut off from the most diverse wards and precincts that ought to be an in, that they ought to be in a, an integral part of. Now, if you if you if you were um, listening into the city council meeting last Monday night, the city council just voted to reinstitute or have the city manager look into reinstituting the community school councils. The community school councils are neighborhood councils. So the city council is saying by this vote, we want to strengthen communities. And so what I see that the election commission proposing to do, maybe for the right reasons, maybe because you are legislatively um, inclined to do that, you are in essence diluting and disenfranchising um, the community and working in cross purposes to what the city council is trying to do. So I hope that you'll reconsider that. Could we consider this redistricting? I want to thank you for your time. I yield the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your comments. Um, I would ask that um, when you're called on, if you could please state your address for the record um, to be recorded. Thank you. The next person will be uh, Mr. Jerry McDonough. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and thank you to members of the Election Commission. My name is Jerry McDonough. I live in 13 Hollis Street in North Cambridge. I have one question and then I have two recommendations. Um, one is a small recommendation, one might be is, is, is a much larger recommendation. But my first question is in the proposed voting precinct map, the border between um, what we know as Ringe Towers and um, Jefferson Park, um, between what's the proposed 10-3 and 11-2, I'm just wondering where brickworks uh, will end up. Um, will they end up in 10-3 in or 11-2? If anybody has an answer to that, I, I'd appreciate um, that information. Um, secondly, um, I have a very small, if this map is the map that the, the commission is going to um, recommend, I have two small changes. One is that there's the tracks between North Cambridge and, and West Cambridge, Ward 10 and Ward 9, really is a barrier that separates, you know, those spaces. And um, it, makes it, it makes the idea of, of crossing the, the tracks is, is very difficult in terms of voting. There's a small sliver um, on the map um, that, is, uh, that was in Ward 10 um, around Bolton Street and Walden Square Road, I think. Um, I think there's 206 people there um, that has been included in, in Ward 11 Precinct 2. Um, and then there's a triangle at the end of Pemberton Street with three different census blocks um, surround, bordered by Yerksa, Ringe Ave, and Pemberton Street. Um, and there's 276 residents there. And I, I would just recommend swapping those two things. I think if you add those 276 votes to Ward 11 Precinct 2 and add the other 203 votes, uh, residents from, um, you know, the Bolton Street, Walden Square area into 10-3, that won't change, that will change the numbers a bit, but it won't go over the, 
the caps that, that, that are established for precinct size. And I think those are his, those places were historically in, in Ward 10 and Ward 11. And I don't know why the change was made. Maybe it had something to do with the polling location. So, um, so that's my, that would be my suggestion if, if, the, if the commission is gonna adopt this map that they make that small change. But there's a larger change and that is, I, I think it's inappropriate to have Ringe Towers um, in Ward 10 Precinct 3. Um, it's not contiguous to, uh, to contiguous to any place where people live, it's contiguous to a shopping center. Um, and um, it just seems like it's breaking that piece of our neighborhood off and, and combining it Ward 10 just doesn't make sense to me. And if there's a way around it, um, I think I would appreciate if you try to find a way around it. I know there was a simulation number three map, I think that kept um, Ringe Towers, that, that census block in um, Ward 11. And I think it's, it would be really important to try as much as possible to, to keep Ringe Towers there. There's so much that Ringe Towers um, as, you know, as a challenged population there and so many issues that, that arise that are, that are similar to other issues in, in the neighborhood about traffic on Ringe Ave, Jerry's Pond, crime, all kinds of things that we have to deal with in, in the neighborhood. Ringe Towers, I, I think is just more appropriate and would be helpful to people there if they were, if they remained in Ward 11 and were part of the fabric of, remained a part of the fabric of our community. So I thank you for that. That one question, a small change recommendation and a larger recommendation is something like the simulation map three would be, would be preferable from my point of view. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. The next person is Ms. Esther Haney. Make sure you're unmuted, please. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Great. Um, my name is Esther Hennig. I live at 136 Pine Street. I'm here today to express my grave concerns about the proposed redistricting of Ward 2. I'm a longtime resident of the port and of the Ward 2 committee. 20 years ago, two redistrictings ago, I was shocked to see that the redistricting of Ward 2 included all of MIT, including the part on the other side of Mass Ave, up to approximately the BU Bridge. That left a relatively small number of year-round long-term residents, so we were unable to find enough people to constitute a Ward 2 Democratic Committee. I was bound and determined to prevent the same thing happening in the next redistricting. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to know when the redistricting process is happening and how and when to weigh in. I only saw the new Ward 2 redistricting at the end of the process and all of MIT was still included, but even fewer other residents. When I asked why the other part of MIT couldn't be included in adjacent Cambridgeport, I was told that wasn't possible because Cambridgeport is a neighborhood, implying that we aren't. That felt very familiar as a longtime port resident. From the unfulfilled promises of the Model Cities program in the 70s to being known as Area 4, the police designation for our neighborhood for many years, rather than as a neighborhood until that was changed recently. Our neighborhood feels consistently dissed and the redistricting of Ward 2 has just strengthened that feeling. The result of this configuration of Ward 2 means that it has been many, many years since we have had enough people to be able to, con to create a Ward 2 Democratic Committee. This directly impacts the few residents not affiliated with MIT in their ability to be actively involved in current politics, and in particular, the public housing residents of Washington Elms and Newtown Court. The current proposal for Ward 2 further reduces the small number of residents not part of MIT, I would no longer be in Ward 2, I would be in Ward 3. Not only will the new redistricting result in continuing to reduce the number of active committees citywide to only 10, but most egregiously, I feel that it has even further marginalized our public housing tenants at Washington Elms and Newtown Court. This has deprived these tenants of the opportunity to participate in a vibrant and active ward committee that helps neighbors to share common concerns get to know each other and give them a voice in city and state issues. 
Also, as the wards select delegates to the Mass Democratic Party's conventions, endorse candidates, and hold candidate forums, these public housing residents in a ward with just MIT would not have the opportunity to participate in these activities. It gives them less political pull than voters in neighborhoods with active committees. I urge you to redraw your lines to ensure that Ward 2 can create an active and engaged committee with people who are committed to involving and engaging their neighbors in local issues, as well as helping to register them to vote, engaging with them on current issues, and helping make sure they get to the polls. I urge you to create a Ward 2 that extends to the residents of Newtown Court and Washington Elms the opportunity to participate in the political process and be part of a committee where they can have a voice for their concerns, needs, and interests. I feel it's just wrong to continue to isolate, marginalize, and further disenfranchise these important residents of our city. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. The next speaker will be Margaret Donnelly Moran. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great, thank you. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, my name is Margaret Dolly Moran. I'm director of the planning and development department at the Cambridge Housing Authority, 362 Green Street, Cambridge, Mass. I've worked at the Housing Authority since the 1980s and have worked specifically with the Washington Elms and Newtown Court resident community since the late 1980s to protect and preserve the properties as deeply affordable housing. These two sites at CHA, are CHA's largest developments in Cambridge, housing over 443 families, serving a substantial number of low um, income and racially diverse populations. Over the past 30 years of working with these residents, I've seen a, the repeated efforts to marginalize and minimize Washington Elms and Newtown Court residents' abilities to participate in civic activities. And the proposed redistricting of the precincts furthered these efforts. The proposed precinct map places Washington Elms and Newtown Court in Ward 2 um, and um, will serve to isolate Washington Elms and Newtown Court from its more established resident port neighborhoods. It really is the only residential portion of um, the port that's being moved away from, from um, the balance of the neighborhood. And by moving them away from the more established port neighborhood, it prevents them from engaging with their neighbors on a variety of civic activities including, as others have said, to being active participants in, in an active ward. And being absent, being absent being in an active ward and being part of the larger community, um, it really um, lessens the residents' opportunities to participate um, in a whole variety of civic matters. And, it, and given where we've been in, in the last couple of years, it just seems like we're continuing going down the path of further disenfranchising a group that's already been disenfranchised. So I would at, respectively ask that you redraw the precinct lines in a more equitable way to allow Washington Elms and Newtown Port to be in a ward that includes the more established and historic residential port neighborhood, which has been a part of its history since the 1930s and 40s when the buildings were first constructed and the residents first moved in. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker will be James Williamson. Um, thanks uh, for the opportunity to speak to this. Um, James Williamson, 1000 Jackson Place in Jefferson Park in North Cambridge, and it's currently Ward 11. Um, first of all, I just this is this is I think qu quite important. Um, stuff that is being discussed here and the, the, the possibility of making these changes. And, it, you know, it's, it's actually, it's sort of very esoteric at the same time. And I just want to call out the fact that, the, you know, almost nobody pays attention to this kind of thing and understands what's happening and what the, the impact of this is, may be. Um, I guarantee you, there, there, I, would, I would guess there might be one person in uh, the towers who is aware of this possible change. And I guarantee you, you know, I'm probably the only one in, in Jefferson Park 
who is alert to the possibility of what of the change that could be be made here. So my first, I guess, thought and 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 request is that is that there be ample time as you know people begin to hear about something they learn about and there's and then there's an, a, a better opportunity for more people to 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 be to to participate and um, offer their their feelings, uh, the perspective about this. So the timeline on this, I, I, I hope will be extended in a way that will, will permit really uh, ample participation, get, at least have a chance to get the word out to people. Um, so, and be, I'd, I'd like to know sort of if, what is the contemplated, what is the timeline that's contemplated for implementing this? Um, so, I, I couldn't, I really agree very much with what Mr. McDonough said um, uh, about cutting off the, 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 the railroad tracks are a real barrier. Um, I walk since the beginning of COVID, I've spent a lot of time going over to the, to, to the Fresh Pond Mall and it, there's, there's no e easy way to get there. I mean, you, you have to walk down, it's, it's treacherous getting across Aylwick Brook Parkway, people have been actually pedestrians have been killed there in the last several years, one in particular some years ago. And then you have to walk over this bridge. It's very, it's not a, a, a great experience. And it's it's certainly onerous for, for a lot of people. So and, and, and there's no other way to get across. Um, so that is a mistake, I think, to cut to cut off um, uh, the the towers from its traditional uh, connection with the neighborhood. And, you know, I, the, the, the voting, the polling place for uh, Ward 11 has always until the last time when it was moved to the Reservoir Church has always been in the uh, community center uh, in the office building at Jefferson Park. And I've often been out there uh, sometimes for myself trying to make sure that I as a writing candidate, make sure I stay on the Ward 11 committee. Um, sometimes, you know, out of interest in, in, in other candidates, sometimes supporting other candidates or a, a, a ballot issue. And I see the people coming from range, from the towers to vote. And, you know, it's a great experience. Uh, and I think it, it, it's in, they're in, the, the community there tends to be, I think, more than many other areas in Cambridge, uh, 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 people who are relatively new immigrants to the city. And it's re really quite impressive to see the participation by people um, walking, coming down Ringe Ave and turning in to vote. And I think it would, uh, you know, I just want to second the, the whole idea that it's, it would be a real shame to cut those people away from the neighborhood that, that they are a part of. And that I think everybody else in the neighborhood um, get value from, uh, from the, the connection that these folks have. So it's a physical connection, but it's also a social and community connection that's already, I think, actually difficult enough for, for people to have that connection. And so to relegate them to, to a, a different, not, not only a, a, different, a different precinct, but a different ward altogether across the railroad checks, I think would be a really big mistake. And so I, I hope that could be, can be corrected. I would urge you to correct it. And I haven't seen simulation number three, but if there's a way to see it, I'd, I'd certainly like to have a chance to do that. And, um, you know, as I say, I think there should be an opportunity for, for more careful uh, review of, of this, this, this uh, uh, issue in particular. So thanks a lot, take care. Thank you. Um, that being said, I see no more hands raised. Um, if there are any other people amongst the public who would like to speak, please um, raise your hand at this time so you can be recognized. Okay, I didn't, I'm gonna check with um, Ms. Waxman to be sure I didn't miss anybody. Do you see any hands raised? No. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, then I will move that we close public comment.
I second that. Okay, roll call. Commissioner Ward? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner Marquardt is likewise a yes. Um, okay. Every Everything again has been recorded and we will go back and we will be looking at it and reviewing. Um, and again, we're bound by guidelines put forth by the state, um, but we will do everything in our power to address concerns as they have come up. Um, that being said, um, we will screen share. Okay, thank you. Did you want to? Did you want to move reprecincting up on the agenda so that the commissioners can discuss it? Uh, yes, please. So I would. So Commissioner Ward, do you want to move to suspend the rules? I I move to suspend the rules to. Um, to move um, reprecincting up for discussion. Need a second. A second. Uh, I will start. All right, Commissioner Harris seconds. Roll call, Commissioner Ward. Yes. Commissioner Harris. Yes. Commissioner King. Yes. Commissioner Marquardt. Yes. So rules are suspended to bring forward reprecincting. Um, I also included in the agenda packet. Um, after the minutes, some of the public comment that we received by email. So if anybody from the public um, would like a copy of the agenda, please email and um, I can send it to you. Thank you. Uh, the email address is elections at cambridgema.gov. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to call on Commissioner Harris. Hi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just would recommend maybe that we could. Um, I don't know. I assume everyone would like to to respond to the public comment, and then obviously we have um, Mr. Romero and Mr. Sweeney from GIS here um, uh, to also review um, public comment and review the map. So I don't know if we just want to go around or how you want to move forward, but I assume that we all want to sort of jump in. So that's just my suggestion that maybe we go around or um, if people have something right away they want to discuss. Um, I, I, th I think we can make it more fluid and I mean, if someone has something they want to discuss, we could just, I can recognize them by raise of hands and have everybody have input. How's that? Mr. King, is your hand going up or? No, no, no. Um, I mean, there was a couple of questions posed by the speakers. I don't know if you want to try to address those in real time. Uh, Mr. McDonough asked where Brickworks will end up, if it'll be 10 or 11, I'm not sure. Um, I can tell you what the addresses are for that, if maybe GIS can answer um, what precinct that ends up in, but I'm not sure if you can, I mean, I'm looking at the map, I, I think it's gonna be in 10-3, but I'm not 100% sure. Can, can Sean, address that. I don't mean to put them on the spot, but. Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can locate it on the map. Okay, thank you. Google tells me it's 320 Ringe Ave. Does that sound right? Yeah, it's, um, I mean, I think it's 312 through 324. I think it's a number of building, a couple buildings. Is 
or 310 through 324. That's what assessing has, um, 310 through 324. That doesn't always match, you know. But, um, you know, okay. we, we can talk about other things while you check right. that. I think there was another question as well. Um, Commissioner Marquardt, did you by chance get it? Um, there were questions. Um, Mr. Williamson was requesting additional time for reviewing. Um, that was a question that I had. And there was also a request if people could see simulation number three. And that's all I had, Mr. Mr. Chair. Okay. Someone I thought there was another question prior to Mr. McDonough, but okay. Wait, hold on. Say what? So Mr. Chair, what, what are we what business are we conducting right now? Well, we're having a discussion. We can address some of the issues and concerns that came up um, from public comment. Uh, I'm sure people are waiting to hear in terms of what we, what our thoughts might be on the way the maps are drawn at this point. I, I, I pointed out some of the restrictions in, um, that we were um, under in terms of how things mm -hmm were um, pointed out. If commissioners want to step and chime in and add anything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right, all the comments that I noted here were focused on 2-1 and then a couple focused on Ward 10. But, um, I'll have to look at the maps. I, I just can't generically comment on what what can be done. I mean, the, the 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 comments were, of course, important, and we'll take them into consideration. Um, they focus on the ward committees more than on voting precincts. Um, so we'll just have to, you know, take a look at it. Commissioner Harris. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess I just um, we I echo what Commissioner uh, King said. Uh, there's clearly a lot of um, interest and concern expressed about the current configuration of Ward Two, Precinct One, in particular, in Ward Two. I don't know, and I don't want to put um, our representatives from GIS on the spot, but um, there were some specific recommendations that we received in. Um, emails that were sent to the commission. And I don't know whether that's possible to look into whether Newtown Court in Washington Elms could be um, included. And the I think it would basically involve wards two, five, and three, I think, from the comments we received, whether that could be reconfigured. Um, so um, certain, uh, so Again, Washington, um, Elms, Newtown, Corn uh, would not be sort of the only significant um, non-MIT population in that particular ward and precinct. Um, I don't know as well whether we can take, again, there's some uh, concern expressed about Ringe Towers. Um, I understand the concern there. I do wanna let people know while we haven't confirmed this yet, um, we certainly would not want to isolate um, Ringe Towers as far or make it difficult for them to cast a ballot. Um, we are hoping that we would have it possibly at Reservoir Church. Again, this is all very preliminary discussion. I don't want to, uh, you know, put this out as um, a fait accompli or anything, but I think we don't want to certainly make the actual uh, physical casting of a ballot uh, um, an excessive burden and hopefully have it in a place where people can get to fairly easily and also perhaps 
um, maintain some sense of community. Again, we've learned from the pandemic that we do need uh, larger spaces to conduct elections. Um, we have been dealing with some pretty um, challenging circumstances with a lot of our polling locations. So we are trying to find um, adequate locations to conduct these elections um, for the voters and for our workers. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other concerns that were expressed, but I think, again, we're looking at mainly, um, is there a way to address some of the concerns that have been expressed about, in particular, Ward 2, Precinct 1, and some of the actual recommendations that people made around possible movement of um, wards and precincts? And then also, um, is it possible to possibly take the way Ward 10 and 11 are configured in simulation three and putting it onto this map. Again, I don't know. And I know that these census blocks, it's very difficult to move things around because then you are impacting the numbers within any given um, location. So that's all I have to say at this point. Okay. I think one of the questions, um, pertain to when this would take place. And this would um, be next year before any of this went into effect. Mr. So Chair, I think there was also just a, I, I, I maybe misheard this, but I thought there was a question just about our process at this point um, and a concern about um, the notification to the community about that this is going on. But I don't know, I could be wrong. That's what I thought the, the speaker had commuted, the, the member of the public had expressed. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna call on um, Jeff. Hi, uh, Jeff Romero, <clears throat> the GIS manager at the city. Um, just to give you a, a little, uh, behind the scenes of what we're doing with the, um, for those of you that are on the call, is that each uh, census block has a certain number of population, as you, as you may know. And <clears throat> some of the bigger blocks are, are a bit problematic, um, especially since um, uh, some big blocks have come up that are new in uh, Cambridge Crossing and um, over in Cambridge Park Drive. Um, Newtown Court and Washington Elms together is about is 12, about 1,209. Um, it's uh, at least a third, I, I guess, about, you know, our target is 3,588 that we're trying to do. Um, Ridge Tower block is, is big. It's 20, it's our biggest blocks, 2,070. So <clears throat> moving those around moves everything else around. So it will def, it would, it would, it would have changed. And, you know, that we've tried a couple of different things in different scenarios as long as well as the Secretary of State um, scenarios. Um, one of the things that we don't we, we don't have as this time as we did last uh, the last few censuses is the data came out so late that they were um, really under the gun to make these these deadlines so um, the state's moving along with their their process and in we're trying to, you know, come up with something too. So, um, uh, moving moving the blocks around, um, we talked about maybe trying to do this um, live, and then we decided that that might not be the best idea because it's you, you move one thing, it's just not as easy as taking two of these big blocks out and then finding a spot for the other two um, because it has the rippling effect through the whole um, through the whole city. So. Um, that uh, I just don't think that would have <clears throat> it would have I think it would have confused people more than it would have helped people. Um, so we'll take that we'll take the um, the comments and and with the commissioners uh, come back with that and um, certainly uh, try to try to do what we can. Um, but um, they're they're big blocks that we're talking about. So we're going to have to. They're, they they have a ripple effect through the whole city. We'll change every precinct. It won't just change. I mean, we'll, it won't just change one. It's just it's not as easy as swapping um, some big blocks like you know in one one with with two one. We, like those aren't contiguous. But um, just to just to go through the process, you know, just a little behind the scenes of what it takes to do this. Okay, Commissioner Harris, is your hand raised again or? 
Yeah, I just wanted to quickly respond to Jeff, and I just wanted to make sure that that both uh, Mr. Romero and Mr. Sweeney knew that I was not asking them to, uh, you know, I wasn't expecting it to happen tonight, but just curious. And I do know that both those um, areas, those both those housing communities are do have a number of people in them, and it it is um, not a simple tweak. So I appreciate though you being here and um, being willing to kind of work through these some of these issues. Thank you. Um, I'm going to call on um, the assistant director. Did I see your hand up, Leslie? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, well, there's a couple things I wanted to say. One was, um, you know, we talked about how hard it would be to actually move these census blocks, but one of the impressions that I was getting from the comments was that the issue is not actually with the borders as much as with the what ward. Um, the precinct is in. So I, I think what some of the emails that we received were actually suggesting was to renumber. And I don't know if that would cause other problems, but I just wanted to um, to mention it as something to think about that they were suggesting that if we take the lines as they're currently drawn and change two one to being a something in um, ward three and then take five, three and put it into ward two and then take, um, I guess one at three, three and put it into ward five or something like that. So I don't know if that would cause more neighborhoods to be broken up or more problems to be broken up, you know, if they were broken up by ward, but um, at least that kind of solution would move those um, housing developments out of Ward Two, which I think is what they were requesting. So I don't, I don't know if there would be a lot of negative feedback to doing that because maybe three three has more in common with three two than five than Ward Five. I'm not sure, but that that was one of the suggestions. So I just wanted to mention it to make sure that everybody understood that that was one of the suggestions. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say was, you know. Um, I do understand the difficulties with Ward 2 form, um, forming a Ward Committee, and I appreciated the person who spoke about the historical background because I've been here since the last three precincting, and I was a little confused because this seemed like this had already been, um, those housing developments were already part of Ward 2 for the last 20 years. Um, and that's that's true, and they had formed Ward Committee, so I now I understand a little better about um, that there were objections to that at the time 20 years ago because we weren't here for that. Um, but it it really seems like it's just about ward committee because Cambridge doesn't elect councilors by ward like some cities right. do. And the when the state draws their maps for the state rep districts or the state senate districts or congressional districts, they don't take ward into consideration. They they can they can break up wards all the time, so they just take precincts into consideration. Hopefully, um, and that was the other thing I wanted to say was in terms of deadlines. Um, when we started this process, we thought we had till October thirtieth, but we have been getting pressure from the Secretary of State's office to submit a map much sooner than that because the state legislature. Um, would like to draw their districts before November because they want to know what district they're going to be in a year before their election in 2022. And so if we don't have a map submitted to them, they could end up drawing their districts without regard to any of the factors that we've taken into consideration, which is a lot of factors such as where people go to vote and they could draw just based on census blocks and we would have to go with their lines because we have to have our precincts voting in the same district. So if we don't, if we take too long on this process, we risk the state legislature drawing lines in Cambridge without regard to any of the factors that we wanted to take into consideration. So um, I don't know when the next LEDRC meeting is, but they, they met today um, and Obviously, we, we weren't able to submit a map by today, but um, that, that's the pressure that we're facing in terms of time. Right. And um, just to add um, a little bit to that in terms of historical, um, that's pretty much what happened. I think two, Leslie, you were here maybe two cycles ago when Cambridge um, had two representatives and now we ended up with six, um, the way it was- I wasn't here for that. 
Huh? That was before my time, but yes. Oh, that was before you. Okay, maybe I've been here longer. Just as a as a citizen, and um, it was a similar situation where they wanted to draw their lives, and if we didn't have anything in, it didn't stop the process. So I think that this is good that people aren't getting some say in it. I understand and empathize around the timing of it, but again, that is not set by us is set by the state but we are trying to accommodate um specifically the concerns of people here in cambridge so we are under pressure to give something in so we don't um end up with a de facto situation map or redistricting from people who are not necessarily concerned with how it looks for us, and I'm being generous, <laughs> but more how it would affect their reelections. Um, oh, Commissioner Marquardt, see your hands up. Thank you, Commissioner Ward. First, I apologize, I lost internet, so I'm using my phone today, which is Oh, okay. I was wondering which, what was going on. Which is thrilling. I just, I don't have any internet at the moment. So um, I wanted to echo what Leslie also mentioned that with regard to the Washington Elms uh, Ward 2, Ward 3, Ward 5, I read all those comments um, as being an exercise in renumbering to put different precincts into the wards um, rather than a, a wholesale redoing of the lines, which I think from a, a process of how you would do it is pretty straightforward. The only question is what will the impact be on the neighborhoods that are now also switching wards? And I don't know historically, I mean, I'm, I'm in my third ward on this and, and since I moved here. So it's, I get moved every year, every 10 years, which is great. Um, I look forward to being in Ward 2-1 or Ward 3, if we rename me that. Um, I think that it is doable. I just don't know what the impacts are on those neighborhoods. Um, and I don't know what that would require with regard to the timeline. As for the ability for Jeff or Sean to redraw 10 and 11 slightly differently, I don't know if that's doable without shifting everything all over the place. But I think those are the two areas, if, if I'm hearing everybody correctly, those are the two areas of concern. The historic 11 and reconfiguring Port Wellington, Harrington, parts of East Cambridge and um, Cambridge Port to have more inclusive and potentially functional um, wards that represent the neighborhoods. Okay. Uh, um, Commissioner Harris. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I appreciate um, my appreciation to Ms. Waxman and Commissioner Marquardt. I'm sorry I misread um, those emails. And as you both mentioned, that might be what was proposed, a, a, a slightly easier um, situation to consider and uh, put into the map, uh, or actually not put into the map, but just a, an easier, obviously, um, potential fix um, to some of the concerns, or at least addressing some of the concerns about uh, the current configuration and um, of, in Ward Two of Washington Elms and Newtown Court. And again, I just, uh, you know, as a as a suggestion, um, again, I I understand you make changes, but I don't know how other people feel about possibly seeing if um, GIS could um, overlay the Ward. 10 and Ward 11 map in simulation three onto this current map that we've um, presented to the public. So that's just, again, I, I wanted to propose that. I don't know if that's possible or if you know somebody from GIS wants to comment that it might have to be done a different way in order to address the concerns about Ringe Towers now being in Ward 10, Precinct 3.
Okay, I'm not sure. I could, um, yeah, I could speak about that. Um, so uh, actually, since I'm on, uh, first thing, I, I, I still, I'm not 100%. I think Brickworks is actually in 10.3, but I'm not 100% sure um, which building it is. And if, am I able to screen, share my screen, Liz? Um, I can give you the power. Hold on one second. Let me just make you a co-host. Okay, you should be able to share your screen now. Okay. Uh, let's see. And we just want to get this one. So, um, you know, let me just do this. Okay. So this is these. This is those two blocks. Um, this is Ridge Towers and Jackson Place over here. Is this the Bricksworth building here? Or is it one building or is it more than one building? What we're seeing here is the um, is the actual census block lines drawn by the census. So this is one big block and this is another big block. Uh, and there is a little jog here going around this one building. And I wasn't sure. 312, 314, 318, th those are all brickworks. All these and 320 yeah. also or? I think so actually. So it looks like because the of the way- census that, block cut it. The way, because of the way the census drew the lines, uh, the Census Bureau drew the lines, it's actually split. So all of these are in 11-2 and this one is in 10-3, the way it's drawn right now. Where's 324? 324, no, it's really hard to read. Right. Um, I don't know. I don't Maybe there isn't a 324, sorry. Yeah. It, is that one of the, that, is that an assessing address maybe? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, this is what it looks like right now. And it looks, um, because of the way these, because of the way the Census Bureau do these block lines, um, there is a line that runs right down through the middle of that development. Mm. Um, okay. How do I stop share? I say new share. And it's, it's, I got oh, okay. um, <laughs> uh, so, and talking about possibly taking simulation 3A and overlaying it with simulation um, 2C, I, I, really, I, can't, I hesitate a little bit just to, to, to say that it's possible, but just because the, if you look at 3A in, um, in the middle of the city, there's a there's a lot of changes to there's a lot of differences to what's in in um, simulation 2C. So that part of the way that we were able to do what we did with the simulation 3A was by pushing a lot more changes down into the middle of the city. Um, and I don't know I don't really know quite how far that ripples. I'm trying to look at them both at the same time right now, but um, I, I know it ripples probably down at least to Harvard and maybe into Harvard, um, but I'm not sure if it gets, if it ripples a little bit beyond that or not. But um, Victoria, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought we weren't considering simulation three anymore. Um, that we were just, because that there are a lot of, there is a lot of change in simulation three and um, we had a lot of, we realized a lot of voters, a lot more voters would be changing polling locations, which I think is a bigger concern to more people than some of these other, you know. So I don't, I don't know, I thought, you know, wait, if there's changes we can make to this map maybe, but I, 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 I thought we weren't really considering. Well, I guess just what I'm hearing is that there is some concern about range towers sort of being and again, I understand, I mean, there's distinctions between neighborhoods and groups. And again, you know, as, as people have correctly pointed out, we have at-large elections in, in the city. It's just, there was some, uh, I don't know, some opinions expressed to me about the, the idea of having the way, it, in particular, I think it was 11 to 
you know, boards basically 10 and 11 looking the way they looked in simulation three. And I understand it's not just that easy that you can kind of just make little changes to one part of the city. It does have that ripple effect. I'm just, I'm just asking the question given the feedback uh, I received and also that was expressed tonight around wrench towers. And now obviously it does look like it doesn't make sense to be separating one building of brickworks another. Um, into another precinct. So I, again, I'm just asking the question. I'm, I'm not trying to say we're going to simulation three. I'm just saying, yeah, is no, there I a just way to, to clarify. yeah, is there a way to, to group parts of certain maps? Like, can we combine certain maps? And again, I know that's not, the, you know, you just can't do that. Um, it's not that easy, but explore the possibility of trying to get it to look more like that part of the city more like what it is in simulation three. That's just my suggestion. And again, I'm leaving it to our experts in GIS to, to let us know if that's possible or not. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely something we could try. Um, certainly, if, um, if that's what the, the commission would like to do. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I just don't know how far the change, how far ranging the changes would be, um, but it's certainly something we could try. Great. I, I, that yeah, no, and I understand. I mean, I think it's just if we can explore it, it might be worth exploring. Um, but I don't know how. I, you know, I'm curious to see how my colleagues and other people feel about that. What's the timeline on that, Leslie? That they would I'm have what? how much? I'm sorry. I, I said the timeline on what? I wasn't clear. I, what you... I, I said in terms of the, um, GSI reworking the simulations, how much time are we talking about? I, I, I understood that this the state wanted this quote yesterday. <laughs> um, clearly, we're still in the process of discussing it and everything. But at some point, they make their decision. And I'm trying to get a sense of what what is the timeline that they're that they're going by? This is, this is Jeff. Um, doing a big move like some of the things that we're doing takes several days. It, it's it's almost it's impossible to turn it. You know to it, it because it has such a, a large rippling effect. I mean we well, I think that we well, we end up trying to do is to to make these changes and then we have to you know go through the details um of of this so um you know the first thing to do is to start playing around so what the software does is it it reconfigures all the other blocks and it and and it will go as far you know there is some control in it and sean's the one that's actually running the program um so the um but the um it it it's it takes some time to be able to move these around. So, um, you know, Sean, how long did it take to do, you know, simulation three, which was from scratch, you know, so that one was, but then we use simulation two was, we use a secretary of state and we found out that it took the exact same amount of time to do both maps using the first one that came from the secretary of state's office and the second one that was just from scratch, but they, it was, a, it was, took a week to create those about, right, Sean? Yeah, I mean, start to finish with making the changes and, and reviewing them and, you know, tweaking them and making the maps and everything took took a whole week. I don't remember exactly how much time it took to just um, do the initial changes, but but it did. Um, it was interesting to me that starting from scratch and starting from the, the state um, simulation and pushing things around was just about the same amount of time. So it wasn't really any, it didn't. It didn't save any time to be starting with something, I guess. So the I guess the answer is we don't know until we try and and you know and do it. You know we didn't want to just do it on the fly here, but um, you know we'll be we'll be we can play around with this tomorrow and have a better idea of you know what it will take. But there it, it's going to change other things also. The, the, we're, we're playing around with the biggest blocks in the city as population blocks.
I'm sorry, I think I was muted. So I think essentially what you're saying, by the time all those processes take place, there will not be time um, for, for more public comment. Um, Is that what, what I'm hearing correctly? Well, can I make a, a comment? This is um, Tanya. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I've just been sitting here listening. So I just wanted to correct something. Yeah, the, the state, the Secretary of State's office um, was requesting that we um, shorten the time on making this map, but it was primarily because they were trying to help um, because at the same time, the legislature is drafting their maps and we're not even clear as to what they're using to draft, draft those maps because they don't have a, pre a re-precincting map at this moment. So they're not utilizing anything that this office has submitted to them. So we don't even know how that um, their map will even turn out. Um, there's another issue here. I just want to make clear that, you know, the commission's work is, is very specific, you know, and unfortunately there's very little um, leeway and they're required to ensure that precincts have approximately the same number of people. And they're not making political decisions. However, um, in making, in the legislature creating their map and making, creating their boundaries, um, there's no doubt that probably there will be some political consideration within that in their deliberation. So I just want people to, I wanted people to understand the distinction um, and why the commission feels um, somewhat rushed. Um, we didn't get this information. We got this information very late in the year um, when we made this decision back in, when we did the re-precincting back in 2010, um, we had several months. I mean, I think that we started back in April or so um, this year. When did we receive the documents in September or something? When, do you remember? Yeah, it was, it was like late August. Yeah, so in the midst of that and everything else that's going on um, with the elections, um, what have you, we're trying to get the board is trying to get these lines drawn so that um, their lines, these lines won't be affected by the legislature's lines. So I just wanted to make that clarity. Thank you. Are, are there other comments? Mm -hmm. Okay. If there are no other comments, um, I think we're going to continue along with the agenda at this point. Mr. Chair, just for the public's um, knowledge, can you tell them next steps, like what's going to happen between now and when we vote on this? Are we going to well, they're, go they're going to try to make an, um, another simulation. Um, we're going to we're going to revisit it and see um, to, to take into consideration as many of the comments made as possible. Um, but um, I would suspect that if they can get through one more iteration of it, then we're going to be voting on this um, within the next, if not the next meeting, well, we have a meeting tomorrow, actually. That's when we were supposedly going to vote on this. Is that correct, Leslie? I thought we were going to vote tomorrow. We were going to see if, I mean, it. it we were gonna see if we could vote by tomorrow. So I, right. that's up to you guys. Um, but what I'm saying now, if if they are going to do another take another stab at it that won't happen tomorrow i don't from what i'm hearing they can't get this done by overnight right, right. so that would be unfair to even put them in that position so which means it will push the vote back um probably a week before we vote on it does that clarify commissioner king yes thank you mr chair mm -hmm. 
with the goal being to take into consideration um, the feedback that we're gathering from the public, which we very much appreciate having their input. And as um, Ms. Ford and Ms. Waxman mentioned, in terms of getting the information so late, we're doing um, you know, yeoman's work to get it to this point, given when we were giving the information and what we have the, the momentous task at hand to do this. I mean, this is done once every 10 years. Um, and right. it would have been nicer to have it a lot sooner, but it is, we are where we are right now. And I do, and as we all do appreciate the public's input and understand that it's a late notice. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yes. Just one more comment. Um, the comments that we, we heard today are suggesting some pretty, you know, sizable changes and you know, it's like a, it's like a piston, like an engine. One goes down, the other pops up. And um, I'm concerned that if if we try to make the changes as suggested, then other populations may jump in and have um, comments about, you know, where they got replaced or repositioned to. Because I, no one mentioned in in our comments really I, that part of our considerations also where people vote, um, that's critical. Um, thoroughfares like crossing busy streets, elderly homes, we had to keep those. We try to keep people who live in senior housing closest to their residents. So there's a whole lot of considerations that go into these um, decisions. So I just want the public to know we'll take a crack at it, but obviously there are no guarantees. and. Um, so I just want to say that. Hopefully the point is well taken. Thank you. Hey, this is Jeff from GIS. We, we um, will probably need some more specific, um, you know, directions on uh, it would, you know, what to, which, what we should try to do. There were some that were for renumbering. There were some that were for moving the, um, you know, these large blocks. And so, um, so they said it, pretty much if we tried to do everything, it would be resetting the map and starting over again. So, um, and, you know, that could cause, you know, pro as you say, problems in the other districts too, you know, with, with the consideration. So, um, yeah, having some, some guidance on, on what we should do instead of just trying to do everything would be helpful. Um, I, I do think that we talked a lot about Ringe Towers in our last few meetings. Right. Um, so I think that's something that we, we were trying to do. And um, I know that we did have it in simulation three, but that had a lot of that map had a lot of other problems. So it's all a matter, like Etheridge said, it's all a matter of, um, you know, making one change could affect a whole bunch of other populations. And one of the reasons that we we felt like this one was okay to go with, even though Ringe Towers has moved to Ward 10, is because we're thinking of um, having a polling location for them that would be on their side of the tracks, because that would be most of the population of 10-3, it would be Ringe Towers. So I think that was, that was something that um, we were hoping would help with the issue of having moved them to 10-3. Um, because I think for most voters, it's where they vote more than, you know, issues like ward committee, which ward committee they're part of, um, since right. wards are not really used for any other, um, they're not used as districts for city council or anything like that. Um, so if the main concern is where to vote, I think that we had kind of come up with a solution to that. So it, the Ringe Tower issue um, is probably the harder one to deal with. The renumbering, I think, is something maybe all the commissioners should think about um, looking carefully at who it would affect um, if we were to do that, because I think that's kind of a new idea to us to, to renumber it. Um, but it wouldn't require changing the borders. So we would be, that wouldn't be as much work for GIS for sure, but it would 
it would address the concerns of a lot of the people who spoke tonight and emailed us. Okay. I don't know what you think about that. Um, Commissioner Marquardt. Thank, Thank you, Commissioner Ward. I was just going to comment on that as well. I think that the renumbering is mechanically straightforward, but in will it have an impact on another part of one of those neighborhoods? And without looking at it, it's, I mean, you can sort of think about it. And then I also had a question from Leslie with regard to renumbering anyways. If renumbering results in certain people switching wards, which it will, will that require them to reconstitute themselves? What do you mean reconstitute Recon themselves? Uh, we had a lot of discussion about establishing ward committees and whatnot. Oh, you know what? That's an interesting question because when we did the re-precincting last time, it was right before a presidential primary. It went into effect in 2012, which was a presidential primary year. So the ward committees were brand new. Um, so I, I don't know. I actually, I think that might be a question for um, the Secretary of State's office to answer or uh, the party, um, the parties to, uh, to answer because I would imagine that, um, you know, even just moving the lines the way we have them, even if we don't renumber, there's definitely people who are, I mean, you're switching wards um, and you're in well, a ward I'm, I'm switching precincts. I'm not, oh, you're switching I'm not, precincts, but I'm not, not wards. Precincts, oh, because you're yeah. still in ward two, I'm right. Ward two. But um, there are definitely neighbors of mine that are going from one, from ward one into ward two. And they yeah, there's a lot of change. Yeah, um, there is a lot of, of ward one moving into ward two. And so I imagine there's other ward committee uh, members that will be in a new word and it might just be a matter of um, you know I, it might be a question to ask the parties not uh, or the secretary of state's office but not okay. something that I know I hadn't thought of it because last time we did this it was you know a year that the ward committees were organizing anyway right okay um, commissioner Harris I just want to say uh I think with any of the changes, whether they're, you know, like, you know, somewhat more straightforward, like what we're discussing with regard to the feedback that we've gotten tonight um, around Ward 2, especially, I think it's 2-1, and then possibly uh, moving around some of the other wards and precincts to make a more inclusive and, and uh, you know, take into consideration some of the comments that we heard tonight. Um, that still, I think we need to, as, as people have said, think that through, think of what the potential impacts are, and then obviously get this back out um, to the public. With regard to um, the situation around Ringe Towers, you know, as Ms. Waxman said, and as we discussed last time, and as I know, because that's the uh, area that I supervise on elections, um, I do think that if Reservoir Church is amenable to hosting us, that could be a double precinct site, and it would, um, remove some barriers around actually casting a ballot, um, that it would be accessible by public transportation. It's in the same neighborhood. And I think um, judging from what occurred there last year during the pandemic, um, it seemed like it was a familiar place and it certainly encouraged, um, we saw a good voter turnout there. So I, I think in, in some sense, that's, that's a really good place. I do think though that what's come up tonight that we absolutely have to um, look at is again, this separation of part of Brickworks um, with one building kind of being off into another uh, precinct. And I don't think we want that, certainly. Well, um, same census block though, as Ringe Towers. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I don't know what to, I mean, I don't know what to say about that, but I do think that's gonna be confusing to have people living in a, I mean, I agree it's in the same census block, but I think people identify with a, a community or a, a housing site. Um, so. Anyway, I, I do think that that's a bit odd. Um, so I do think we need to, I understand the constraints. I, you know, again, though, as we've read in, in the paper, um, I guess it was maybe on the second, we do know that the um, state um, is also drawing their maps at the same time. Uh, and I think the unfortunate conclusion there is just that it would have been nice to have had a, a better process that one goes first and then the other responds um, rather than 
these kind of parallel processes happening right now, which I think the article alluded to, if I remember correctly. So, which is some of the maybe some of the concern from the public as well. Um, so anyway, I just I do feel like it it it's going to take even with just the simplest of changes, it's going to take some time to um, digest this information we've received tonight, and then I think get it back out to the public to respond, you know, to again, to respond to, because especially with the changes over and potentially wards two, three, and five, I, I think people should should not be aware of that, that that's something we're considering. Right. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ms. Waxman. Um, well, two things. One, I, well, I just zoomed in on the population by block just so that we could see in that 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 block is, I think, the biggest block in the entire city. So that's half a precinct right there, no matter where it, where it is. So that that's why this was so difficult. And so, um, it the the census block line divides brickworks. So that's that's why we did. But um, what I was actually going to say was one suggestion, and you know, I know, I know. Well, two things. One is um, something that. I might add to the website, which is that if we we could draw these lines and the state, if the state legislature ends up drawing their districts in a in a way that doesn't that breaks up our precincts, we're going to have to redo this anyway, as it turns out, based on the legislation that was just passed um, this week, last week. So uh, I just wanted to, to make the public aware of that, um, that even if we vote and submit something to LEDRC and then at the beginning of November, the legislature does something differently. We can't have a precinct that's voting in multiple districts. Um, we might have to redraw the lines to match what the state legislature does, even if it cuts up something like Brickworks or something like um, Ring. Ringe Towers. Right. Um, unfortunately, which is one of the reasons why we wanted to submit a map before the legislature did that was so that there, there's a lot of other places in the city that we were careful to not break up that they would they might potentially break up. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say was, I could, if the commissioners think this is a good idea, and I don't know if it is or not, um, but I could post simulation three on the website. I think we had two versions of it. I have to double check, but I could post one of those simulations on the website and we could, um, you know, see if we get any comments about that. I think we should, I think. Um, um, because I think that does comments. combine, that does um, put Ringe Towers in Ward 11 and Brickworks all together in Ward 11. It just has a lot of changes elsewhere in the city and would, would cause a lot more, um, voters to change polling locations. So, and we would have to, we would probably, we would have to rethink a lot of our polling locations if we went with that map. Because if I remember that map put a lot of um, our current polling locations in different precincts, which is one of the reasons that we went with the other map. So it would be, you know, I, I don't know that, I don't know if we wanted to go back to considering that map or not, or whether, um, you know, I just wanted to see what the commissioners thought. Well, I think and if, so. if any members of the public want to see it, I'm I'm happy to. You know, we I we had it so as part of our that. previous meeting, so I I could yeah. email it to anybody. I th I think that would be a good idea because it it came up in public comment, if I recall correctly, and I think I even read something. Someone was asking about um, the simulation three. Yeah, James Williamson you. asked for it, but he's not there anymore. Oh, he's back. He is there still. So if if yeah. I don't have his email address, or I would email it to him. But if so, if, if he could put his email address emailed, in the comment section, that would be. Good. Or just email me, and I can email it. Um, but email, it, but elections it, at cambridgema.gov. I can email it. But I think if you're going to put it up for one person, you should put it up for everybody, not just him. But I just didn't want to, I, the reason I asked the commissioners was because if we're not considering that map, then I, I don't want to confuse matters by posting it online. So if we're, if we're not considering, I, I'm willing to share it because it is a public record, but if we're not considering that map anymore, I didn't want to share it. So I wanted to ask the commissioners before I put it online. Whether well, that, previous, that was my question. We had already talked about not considering <laughs> that map. Took all the hands. <laughs> okay, I had a lot of hands up. Okay, I'm going to go to, 
um, Commissioner Harris first. I think she was next in line. You no, know, actually, um, I'm going to let my colleagues go first because I've spoken a lot. So I'm going to yield well, uh, the floor to okay. them first. Um, Commissioner King. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I am not in favor of putting the, if, if you put the map up and now we have two maps, it's just could we can share it because it's public record. But if we give the public the impression that is back under consideration, um, I'm not in favor of that. Um, I think we should try to work off the one that we presented today. That's my opinion. Okay. okay. Commissioner Marquardt. I concur with my colleague, Commissioner King. Um, I think it sends a message that you can pick and choose different pieces of different maps. And we all know that even with just looking at the two maps here besides me, um, just trying to reconfigure 11 as the folks at GIS are gonna take a look at, the differences between 2B and 3A ripple all the way through at least towards Wellington Harrington. So that affects the entire city. So I think working off what we have and trying to make those two targeted adjustments is going to lead to less confusion than if we said, okay, we're going to do both and pick and choose. Okay, thank I you. Think, I think it's just going to lead to um, an expectation gap. Well, okay, thank you. Commissioner Harris. Hi, I thank you. I, I just concur with what my two colleagues said. I, I feel like we, one of the reasons why we picked the map, and I don't know if this has been expressed, is that it would create less change across the city by going with the map that we did present to the public. Um, that said, um, you know, I, I did bring up simulation three as well, but I, you know, I, I as I've mentioned, I realize it's it's not just easy to kind of um, plonk on certain parts of the map because, as people have mentioned, um, we did have two major uh, sort of sources of population increase in the city, um, and it was at Cambridge Crossing and then over in in Alewife at Cambridge Park Drive in that area of um, the western edge of of Cambridge towards Belmont. Um, so. I, I just think that we should sort of stick because I think we've got a process in place now and this is the map that people can comment on. I do think it'll just start to um, uh, complicate matters. Um, and I think overall the map, you know, we definitely have, have some changes we're looking at and we'd like to make potentially, but I think overall the map that we chose to go with did create um, fewer changes for the majority of residents across the city. So long way in saying I agree, I think maybe just sticking with this map and trying to um, make adjustments given public comment would be the way to go at this point. Okay. Do we need to do a consensus on that or do we need to, I don't think we need to take a vote. I don't think that's a, a voting issue. Okay. I, I, I will record in the minutes that we have a consensus because Yes. We all express the same thing that we stick with 2B, but uh, try to adjust the issues raised. Right, to look at what's been stated. Okay. Okay, that's, that's where we are. Are there any other comments on this topic or we're ready to move on? Let's see. Um, let's see, I'm going to. Do you see any other hands? I don't. Nope. Okay. Um, so we're going to, I keep trying to scroll down your <laughs> thing and I don't have any control over that, which is fine. The agenda, I keep trying to scroll down the agenda. Okay. So we had suspended the rules. So I'm gonna, um, so we're gonna go back um, and- The minutes. We go back and review the minutes from the previous meeting and go forth with the reports at this time. And I wanna just reiterate and thank the public for um, attending and uh, making their voices and concerns and heard. We hear you, we appreciate it, and we will do everything possible to um, make sure it's an equitable situation as far as we can. And then hopefully the state will 
pay attention to what we suggest. But thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, the minutes. Uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, Sean and I are going to jump off at this point here, and we'll okay. be talking to you. Um, soon. Sounds like y'all have a little work to do, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Thank you both. I'll talk to you tomorrow, Jeff. Tomorrow morning, if you want. Or Thank tonight. You. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you both. We Thank you. It. Okay. Um, the minute. Thank you. I had gone over, um, I had um, one comment and that was, um, we use the initials GIS and not everybody will necessarily know what that is. So I wonder if we wanna spell it out the first time. If you go back up in the beginning. Can do. It says Sean and um, Jeff from GIS. So people won't know what that is. I will spell it out the first time, Mr. Chair. That was my comment. Are there any other comments on the minutes or people? Do you need a period after policies? Go back up for a second. These are additions to the existing policy. I can add it. It's, it's a tiny thing. It's clearly not a, you've done a very good note taking. <laughs> okay, I move that we accept the minutes with corrections. A second. second. Oops, sorry. Okay. Who wants a second? Uh, Commissioner King can have the second. Okay. All in favor? Oh, sorry. I can't do that. Uh, Commissioner Ward? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner Marquardt? Yes. Minutes are approved with corrections 4 0. Okay. Executive director report somehow yep. got left off of the agenda. <laughs> I was, you know, I'm looking and I'm thinking, what's missing here? <laughs> okay, um, note it, but we will um, ask for the executive director's report as the first well, one. Well, I don't have a report this evening, not really. So, okay, so <laughs> I mean, in anticipation of you know uh, tonight's discussion about the reprising thing. Most of the things can um, wait. 
Okay. Thank you. So, EP1. All right. We'll move to the assistant director's report. Well, I don't have a written report, but I did want to verbally just real quick um, bring up a couple of things that came up over this last few days. Um, one is last year we provided a warden clerk copy of the voting list um, so that they had a copy at their table. If since we're providing them with poll pads, is that something that's still needed, or was there a reason we needed? It? We wanted to have it formatted the way the inspectors had it. Um, I just, you know, we're we're packing our supplies, so yeah, just no, wanted to know the consensus from the commissioners. Poll pads, I mean, people can weigh in obviously on it, but I, my feeling is if they have a poll pad, they don't need more paper at the table as well. Leslie, I could check with them. I could just drop a quick email tonight, but I, I don't know the answer to that. I, I can't imagine why they would, but I'm happy to see if, if they do, but I I don't know. I Yeah, I know this suggestion originated with um, Commissioner Ward's meeting with his warden and clerks back okay. a couple of years ago. So, um, but, but yeah, I think that was just so they had a list at their table. Exactly. And if that's the case, then I would think the pull pad would pull cover it, but I just wanted to, yeah. Okay, so that's that fine. we don't need to print out, yeah. Right. Uh, but if you want to ask your wardens and clerks, just to, we still have time. You can you can just let me know. Yeah, um, I, I tend to doubt it. if it's the same information just on a tablet. I don't. But I'll I'll do a quick say, and they have to get back to me right away. It's the same information, so I don't understand. Why yeah, the only I think the right. only reason was sometimes the inspectors say they can't find somebody on the list, and the wardens and clerks wanted to be able to say, "Look, it's right there." But that that's that's only a couple places that have had issues with that, I think. And uh, you know, yeah. I that's think they'll be able to find it if they know that it's on the voting list. Um, the poor, the poll pads are going to use the same voter file as the printed list, so they will match. Right. They'll it match exactly. Extremely um, redundant. Yeah, and a lot of paper. The, right. the next question I had, well, not a question. I just wanted an update, uh, give you guys an update with the evacuation guidelines, which it's still on our agenda. But um, at the last meeting, we discussed that it was it, um, it was too wordy for them to read during an emergency. And I said that I would work on a new version that was less wordy. Um, I started it, but there's been too much going on and too much to do, so I didn't finish it. Um, but I did get I did send the manuals to be printed. So what I did was I left it out of the manual and we're going, um, I'll have it for you either tomorrow or for the meeting next week to vote on. And then we can just mail it separately. It'll stand out even more that way. And um, we can just let them know, you know, instead of being included in the manual, it's being provided as a separate sheet, but um, we'll have it for them for election day. We just, that way, um, if I make the changes you guys can vote to adopt it because I didn't want to make changes and put them in the manual without the commissioners looking at it first either. Can I suggest that if it's going to be a breakout piece, which I think is a good idea, that it be in a different color because yeah. if this is an emergency procedure, they should not have to flip through a bunch of white paper to try to find it. I was just thinking too, apps actually, you know, I don't let Lola's and I'm happy to come in and help with this is if we could even just include it um, for them, like on a, like a on a laminated piece of paper. So it's prominent, they can tape it down or whatever, but I, I don't want to make too much work. I'm just curious if that could be something that they could have just easy reference. Well, um, um, yeah, so we could, if we did that, I guess we would end up putting it in with the supplies as opposed to putting it in with the manual. Um, I, I don't know what's easier to, to find in an emergency, another laminated sheet with the supplies or a page in the manual, yeah. you know, you, I, yeah. I, I we don't have to decide that tonight, but just think about it. When we vote to adopt the procedures, you can just let me know what you want me to do with them. Oh, so it'll, it, it will be eventually included in the manual or it'll be a separate piece in the well, a, a we can do it piece this year ever. it'll be a separate piece but i was going to put it back in the manual appendix for next election oh, right, i just right. i just didn't include it because it's not ready yet, and i needed to print right. the no, manuals I... so um no i understand so, we that. could do it either way we could do or we could do both we could do um you know like i will definitely put it back in the manual um but if you wanted it to be a separate thing you know another i another think just having it as a separate place maybe brightly colored piece of paper that they know and that they also maybe are mailed at, you know, we, we can figure that out. Again, I, I also, make um, I put in the PowerPoint that it will be on a separate sheet this year. 
because I knew by then when I was doing that PowerPoint, I don't, I'm not sure if the draft I emailed to you had it, but before I sent it to CITL, sure. I think I put for the evacuation page that it'll be a separate piece of paper. So I, I just thought, you know, we can just stick it in the book, um, you know, right, right in the inside cover. Probably more people will look at it this year than they have in any past years since it's, instead of just being in the appendix, it'll be in a brightly colored piece of paper loose in the manual. So, um, and we'll send it to the polls that way too. Sounds good, thank you. Um, and then, is there anything else I wanted? Oh, um, early voting workers, I think that we have, the, I don't know, Charlie, we didn't get yours yet. I have, I have them, she'll have them tomorrow morning. I was just okay. tweeting on one person. That was my guess, um, but I just, you know, um, wanted to make sure because we're going to, that's coming up a week from Saturday. And um, so, Charlie, I think you and I, I think I sent you a couple messages, try to get together with you um, to um, go over the listing. Yeah, we'll talk in the morning, Larry. Okay. And um, I, I just got an email from Tanya earlier. I, we have to add two more inspectors to the, the library. public library. That might so, be, yeah. That, I can, I mean, um, how Pardon? many names are, yeah, we, that, I said that might not be too hard to do because I think a lot no, of people want to no. work. Early voting workers are not very hard to get. Okay, I just want to add that to you, Charlie. So okay. maybe I'll reach out to you as well tomorrow and we can. Yep. Strategy. Thank you. Um, and then just a quick EV update. Um, I did a, I did an extract um, mid afternoon, so I don't, I think Tanya might have gotten updated numbers from Kateria later than that, but um, we had about 8,600, 8,700 early voting requests or vote by mail requests. Um, EV, we had about 100 and something absentee that, all, that were already all mailed out. And I think we got about 3,000 of them mailed out so far. So, you know, we've been, we've been entering them in and we've been getting them in. Um, That's great. So that's definitely underway and as as you all know have you gotten any ballots back yet i think we have one okay or two we had yeah i think maybe just one or two ballots back i know the, the drop boxes were empty yesterday they were empty there was yeah there. Okay. i think when you checked them yesterday maybe only like 100 or so people had gotten their ballots um okay so now we've sent out um you know, I don't know how fast the post office is being with it, but um, yesterday we sent out about 1,200 and today, or maybe 1,500 yesterday at 1,500 today or Thanks, something 3, like that. 3,100 total. 3,100 total. So um, I don't have the number of, wait, actually I do. 3,100 total and 1,400 of them were sent out yesterday. So the rest of those were sent out today. So. If they get it tomorrow, it's possible that they'll vote and put it right in the drop box. Good. Or not. We'll see. Yeah. The, but 1,400 the ballots were mailed yesterday. Yeah, we'll just, they'll go through the process. The good thing is that they um, need to be commended for getting everything out as quickly as we can. So people have the maximum amount of time to you know, review it, make their decisions, and get their votes in. Those who are concerned will probably get them in very early, hopefully. Okay. All right. Um, that's, the, that's all I've got. Okay. Um, commissioner's reports. Any? Yes, I have a couple of things. Um, first, I'll do my two addresses. Uh, 155 Putnam Ave is not valid. Two Florence Street is likewise not valid. Oh, I think I owe you an address. I you think I sent, those, I sent those this afternoon, Leslie. Yeah, I saw it. I just hadn't actually read it, but yeah, so they're, they're both, both invalid. I'm going to reject not. those both now. Um, and the last thing I had, and I will not be able to attend because I'm doing a birthday thing on Tuesday, but on Tuesday evening, there is a buildings and grounds subcommittee meeting. And one of the items on the agenda is the special elections. Hey, I'm so still traumatized from those meetings. <laughs> is this, this next Tuesday? Is this Zoom, Charlie? Yeah, it's Zoom. It's at 5.30. Uh, 
Uh, okay, I will I will attend it. 5.30 on Tuesday. Can you just send me the email, please? I don't know. Aside, I actually looked on their website. I don't think they emailed anybody about this meeting. They just, <laughs> they just put us on the agenda. They did that last time, too. And um, how would we know? So we need to tell Larry what school we, we were requesting. MLK, right? MLK oh, and Morse. Morse. So if you just send me an email of that, that would be helpful. And then I'll, right. I'll write down that the meeting is 530 um, this coming Tuesday, which is what day? Um, the 12th. Tuesday the 12th. School I can also days. go, uh, Mr. Chair, if you need another commissioner to go. Yeah, we'll be more, good. more than willing to go. Uh, okay, I'll put it in my calendar. <laughs> and the only, I'll give um, thanks to um, committee member Fantini for letting me know that the meeting was coming up when I ran into him at, on Saturday. Otherwise I would not have been looking for it. That's how we found out the last time, too, was that he called the office and let us know. That's just outrageous. So those are my commissioner reports. Um, I think, okay. Um, did you have any, Commissioner Harris? Yes, I just, uh, a couple quick things. Um, the Harvard's Votes Project did contact the office, and they also, um, I, I had been in contact with them last year. Um, we, uh, Leslie sent them um, information that they requested, and then they also asked if um, representatives from the commission could come and speak at a meeting um, just to talk about what we're doing and talk about the upcoming municipal election. Again, the Harvard's Votes Project is kind of a university-wide effort around engaging students um, and getting them uh, to vote and registered. Um, so this meeting is coming up on, I believe it's a Thursday, the 21st at 7 p.m. I don't know if it's in person or Zoom, but I can go and happy to attend. I don't know um, if perhaps a Republican commissioner would wanna go, um, but, or whoever would like to, uh, you know, another commissioner, if they're interested could go. Otherwise I'm happy to go and speak, so. Is that, okay. is that a wave, Commissioner Marquardt? Commissioner King, I, I would be happy to go. <laughs> you mean Commissioner Harris or? No, well, I'm you... telling Commissioner King that he doesn't have to go if he doesn't want oh, to. Oh, okay. Is he even there? Yeah, oh. he's on the bottom. Oh, okay. Thank you, Commissioner Marquardt. And then the other um, just quick item, and this might be for, oh, I actually, I'll, I'll talk about it in the PSAs quickly, so. I've been, I've been getting, I just want to make you guys aware. I've been getting lots of requests for my time to speak to the groups all over the country, mm. but I, I've been turning them all down. Speak about what? Republican stuff. Really? Yes. I'm a rare commodity. That's all I can say about it. A, a rare commodity might be true. We're gonna let that one alone for right now. Okay. I've got to hear about these these requests. I'm fascinated. Oh boy. Um, report. Um, Victor and I went to the charter school. Um, I had um, commission, not commissioner, but counselor Toomey had requested at the meeting to review the charter school, but I didn't hear back from him. But in any case, Victor and I we went over um, to do the actual layout of the facility. The facility is more than ample space to hold a double precinct. They're very excited about doing it. Um, they're even talking about the next election. I said, let's just get through this one. <laughs> but um, we don't need to, I think I sent the email, um, Leslie, we don't have to worry about tables and chairs because it's going to be in their cafeteria. So they have tons of tables and chairs in the cafeteria. So that's that's a perfect setup for us. We did that last Thursday, um, Charlie, just for the record. And I will get you the email check tomorrow. Thank you. Tomorrow's Thursday. Yeah. Yes. OK. Are there any other reports? Action agenda, old business. Okay, we did the precincting plan, public feedback, um, municipal elections. We want to look at the PSAs. And we did the um, polling place evacuation guidelines. You're going to just break those out. 
I think Victoria wanted to say something about the PSAs. I don't even see her anymore. Oops. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. Uh, OK, there you are. Yeah, OK. So just on the PSAs, uh, I think uh, time is, is starting to get short now. Um, so as you remember, there were two sort of PSAs. One was very general, just talking about the upcoming municipal election and ways to vote. And then there was one that was focused on the fact that we're going to have a lot more um, probably people, as, as we've seen by the numbers reported tonight, voting by mail and doing something to make sure that people understand how to complete their ballots and then how to send it back to us correctly and get it back in time using the drop boxes and the USPS um, to get their ballots into us uh, by November 2nd. And in, in that PSA was also um, instructions about how to fill out your ballot. So my proposal is this, is that I think that um, Tanya and Leslie have done a great job at the information that, that's been posted about voting and how to vote, you know, the different ways that people can vote either early on November 2nd or through the mail, um, that we focus our time at this point, um, possibly on the PSA around making sure that people fill out their ballots by mail correctly and then send them back to us correctly. And then within that break out another PSA just about how to fill out your ballot because that could be used both for the mail-in piece um, to prep people when they go and vote um, at the early voting sites and then on election day. Um, Calvin said that they're available to come over and film. He suggested doing some filming at the office um, on October 14th. Is that possible, um, Leslie and Tanya, to do um, that? Uh, um, the 14th, Thursday, next Thursday? Yeah. yeah. It looks like it would be fine. What time? Um, I'll talk to Calvin. And what I can do too is Calvin said to, I'm going to take another crack at that and I can share it with people about just drafting out the two PSAs. And actually, um, he suggested having somebody narrate it, but then have people actually, you know, doing certain things. So, we can discuss and you know, I can, we can maybe decide next week who could maybe do the narration or I could you know, make some suggestions. But I also think it'd be great to highlight the staff in some of these. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, so well, anyway. We should, we should actually um, step up the game and, and ask the staff who would be willing to participate in it. So well, we have an idea. So in that vein, um, Tanya and Leslie, how do you, like, can I send things to you and you could ask the staff for volunteers um, around some of this? Um, I don't know how to go about this, but okay. I just want people to be pre prepared. Um, yeah, I think they'd want to know that they were going to be on camera that day. <laughs> right, right. So who would be comfortable doing that? So anyway, so that's, I will send things out. Um, maybe I'll have Leslie, I'll send it to Leslie and Leslie can distribute it or whatever, yeah. however we want to do this um, about, around what the PSAs are and, and sort of the different parts, so. I think, yeah, we just ask people in the office if they want to do it. And I, and I hope that's okay. I don't know how people feel, but I just, again, we're filming October 14th. I don't think Calvin thinks it'll take very long to just then put it together, but, right. um, you know, we don't have a lot of time. I mean, we're four weeks out from the election at this point, so. Right, I think that's very good. Thank you for spearheading that. Okay, is that it, new business? Can you scroll up, please? Mm, there's What's nothing that? else on the... Oh, that's, that was it? Oh, this okay. is the whole thing. Okay, so in light of the meeting and everything, and they're gonna go back, Craig, do we need to meet tomorrow? <laughs> well, I think, don't we need to decide what we're doing? I mean, I think you do, at this late stage in the game, you probably need to have the meeting. Let's have um, the meeting and- Even we'll, if it's just a follow up or maybe possibly, I don't know. Well, think about the comments tonight or tomorrow and then the commission can come back with- Are, are they gonna come back prepared with another scenario tomorrow? I don't, they're not gonna come no. back prepared with another scenario, but- one of the suggestions was to renumber things as opposed to just to changing any lines and we could have that by tomorrow. So 
I, I think that we, um, like Charlie said, we have to look closely and see who would be affected if we did that and how we would renumber it. But I think that's something that maybe everybody can look at the map and, and think about if there's a way we could have the precincts as they're drawn, we'll put, we'll put two one in a different ward than it's currently in and just shift things around. But we have to look at what else that does and not, you know, we don't want to, right. up, you know, and then not give anybody more time to to respond to that. So I, you know, I think that um, maybe we need to have that meeting just so that everybody has time to look at that idea and come back with with thoughts tomorrow okay. night. Um, you know, maybe I could I could probably oh, ask. I'm going to talk to Jeff tomorrow morning. Maybe I can ask him to to make a version that that renumbers it, just so we have something to look at that, um, that would be helpful so he would mail us to, that to us before the meeting i take it yeah i mean okay. I, I mean you could just you know print out a copy and write on it if you want but I, right I, right you look at the emails that we were sent they people gave specific suggestions of which you know move this to this word move that or that to you know so we could we could just just look at it see if it works i don't know i haven't been able to do that either but um and i don't i might not know all the things that you guys know about what that would, what results that would have on Ward Five or Ward Three, but it's it specifically would affect two, three, and five. Right. So. Okay, so we'll we'll meet tomorrow night, and okay, if that's that's still on the table, um, and that's it, I would move to adjourn. Can we not move to adjourn yet? Before I have a I have a question. Okay. Um, it's well, we can do it tomorrow. Um, but my question for either discussion tonight or tomorrow is with the random draw, do we have any guidance as to how we do that if we're doing it remotely? I had an idea and that idea was that, is it the, the chair who picks them out or the secretary who? Oh no, secretary just writes the numbers down. Okay, so it's the chair that picks. It's the chair. So my suggestion so would be that Larry would come to the office and he would set up his Zoom in the back room. Tanya and I would be at our desks. We'll all be on Zoom. And then Larry would pick the numbers out and you would record them. So Larry would be doing it on camera, basically. That That's my suggestion. So that everyone can see it. That's, that's a perfect idea. That's what I was thinking. I would have no issue being in the same room with council, with, I'm sorry, Commissioner Ward. Okay, if that's easier for you. That's just easier, plus you could also argue that you have one member of each party doing okay. the draw. That sounds good. So maybe two of you can be in the commission. The problem with the commissioner's office is that it's filled with boxes. Yeah, I saw. Um, <laughs> we'll have to, we'll have to give can you we, some can we, can You don't we have to be on the commissioner. We'll, we'll figure out some place for you to be. Leslie, can we be upstairs? Yeah, you can be room? upstairs. We can put you upstairs. Okay, we, can, we can be sitting across the table. We've done that many times. Just bring the, yeah, maybe you do it yeah, upstairs. Just that do it that right might be better. Be yeah. Because the commissioner's office is filled with boxes. boxes. Although maybe we'll have so many ballots mailed by the 13th, so I won't have as many boxes. I know. I don't know. We'll see. All right. So okay, that discussion. Good, good, good move, Commissioner Marquardt, to bring it up. One last thing tomorrow night. Okay. Are there any other things that we need to talk about tonight? We're meeting tomorrow at 5:30 via Zoom. Um, yes. If that's clear and understood, I would move to that we adjourn the meeting at 729. Second. Sounds like Commissioner a Ward. Yes. Commissioner Harris. Yes. I don't think we have to do a vote on an agenda. Yes, we do. Commissioner King. Yes. Commissioner Marquardt. Oh. Yes, we are adjourned. We, we always, we've always done it, so it doesn't matter. Well, we've always done it, but. I'm not going to get into procedural Robert stuff now at 7.30. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sounds all good. Right. We're out. Good job, everybody. Thank you all um, for coming and participating. Good work. Leslie, Leslie, good work. Bye. Leave, leave, leave.